Hello everyone, thank you very much for coming today. I'd like to welcome you to Future Frontier Fest by Finolab 2021 Resilience. My name is Chris Wells and I will be your host today. The Future Frontier Fest by Finolab 2021 Resilience starts today and will continue for four days. Today, the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Here is a brief introduction to our four-day agenda. Today, day one, Finno Pitch Day, we will introduce presentation video of 16 companies. On the 24th, day two, FinTech Transformation Day, the themes are FinTech as a Service and Embedded Finance, or Plug-in Finance. On the 25th, day three, Future Technology Day, we will discuss the future of finance, starting with 5G and space initiatives. On the 26th, day four, Financial Award Day, we are holding an award ceremony for the Finno Pitch, as well as JFIA. And with that, let's get Finno Pitch started. First of all, the opening talk is by Mr. Makoto Shibata, head of Finolab, Finolab Incorporated. And he will talk about why Finolab is organizing this event. Mr. Shibata, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Chris, for the kind introduction. And for all the viewers watching this live streaming, welcome to 4F. Future Frontier Fest by Finolab. Last year, we organized this event at Marnoch Building's Grand Hall. But because of the outbreak of pandemic, we had to shift it to online. And this year, the situation has not changed or even became worse, so that we are continuing to organize it online. And during the year, we have experienced dramatic changes in the whole world because of the COVID-19. And particularly, we have experienced a lot of vulnerability in finance, in technology, and in network. And we are now trying to prepare for what we call new normal. And it is still not very certain what form this new normal will take, but it is definitely the case that we would need a more resilience in the future to come. So we have decided to adopt this word resilience for the key word for this event. And we will have many contents during this week. On day one, today, we will have 16 different pitch from many fintech startups from all over the world with this Fino pitch. And we will have a supporting message from Gila Boscovic. And on the day two, we will focus on the changes of financial service. Especially we are seeing that new trend coming in with what people call bank as a service or brokerage as a service or insurance as a service. And we try to call it finance as a service. And we invited all the major players in the fintech world in Japan to discuss this topic. So we will have Mr. Kito from Crowd Reality, Mr. Hayashi from Finatext, Mr. Kai from Folio, and Mr. Onozawa from GMO Aozura NetBank, and Mr. Okita from Nudge. And on day three, we will discuss future and technology. Starting from 5G, we have invited Mr. Noguchi from KDDI and Mr. Takagi from AU Jibun Bank. And followed by space and finance, 
how space will change our future and how financial service would support these changes. And we have invited Mr. Nishimura from Wiratsuku and Mr. Kanemoto from Space Shift and Mr. Kobayashi from Tokyo Marine and Nichido and Mr. Matsuoka from JAXA. And on the final day, we will announce the final result of Finopitch, which will take place today. And also, we will be announcing the winners of Japan Financial Innovation Award. And we have invited Brett King to deliver his keynote message. We would also like to thank all of our supporters, MEFG Innovation Partners, Mitsubishi Estate, and Seven Bank, Sumitomo Life Insurance, ISID, GMO Aozora Net Bank, and Adventure Lab from Nolin Chukin Bank. And along with that, we would also like to thank our community partners. And with their support, we were able to connect to different networks, different audiences, different communities, so that we were able to expand our reach beyond our financial network. And finally, uh, I would like to just briefly touch upon the, the schedule. So day one, which is today, um, February 20, 22nd, on Monday, we will um, start from uh, 7 p.m. Japan Standard Time, and we will have a rerun at 1800 uh, GMT, which is 1300 EST. And on Wednesday, which is the day two, we will start from 1800 GSD. And uh, day three, which is th on Thursday, we will also start from 1800. So day two and day three will be presented all in Japanese. And for day four, which is on Friday, we will also cover with all in English, which will start from 1800 Japan Standard Time, and we will have rerun on 1800 GMT and 1300 EST. So I hope you will all enjoy the rest of the week with our 4F contents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Makoto Shibata. All right, so now we will introduce a pitch for each startup company. This year, eight startups from Japan and eight startups from abroad who have passed the first selection are making a presentation. We asked each company to shoot a video in advance, and we will distribute the submitted videos online. Now, there's a rule for you as well because we also have an audience award, and we would love for you to take a look at the videos and vote on your favorite by scanning the QR code currently displayed and go ahead and take a vote. All right, let's get started. The first half is for startups from Japan. We will present the first entry right now, AI Pay Incorporated with AI Pay. Cashless payment is a growing trend. Is it going to make our life much more convenient? With the outbreak of COVID-19 and concern about infection, people have even become cautious about touching money. As we run to live with this new normal, we try to adapt and find a way to be helpful. I'm Keiji Memura. Founder and CEO of AIPay. I'm pro wax surfer. New and 
diverse payment methods are being developed, and smartphones are now replacing our wallet. Mileage, points, and discount coupons, campaigns, cashback offers. But what the best way to take advantage of those offers? How many payment methods do you use? How many point cards do you have? With all the options, which is the best payment method for you? I've been involved in the payment business for 13 years and I have developed payment terminals and platforms. Despite my experience through, even I don't know which is the best payment method for me, so it's easy to imagine how hard it is for everyone. I forget when it first occurred to me, but I have long expected that we would eventually end up confused by the many payment services that are available. Slowly, the idea of creating a payment solution using AI and blockchain technology took root in my imagination. It became my mission as a venture entrepreneur, and now, in 2021, the time has come. AI Pay is a new generation payment app that recommends the best payment methods through on-site matching between users and merchant payment methods in the real time to enable users to make payment and obtain points and coupons at the same time. AI Pay users simply download the app and register the payment methods, points, and coupons they already have. They just show their QR code at AI Pay Merchant. Up to now, there was no way for us to quickly decide the best payment method at the cash counter. Sometimes we miss out on point, and sometimes we end up not using our discount coupons. How do we know the best choice among all the different payment methods? We usually have to look for points and coupons before payment at the cash counter. It's a bother to have to open different app to complete one payment. AI Pay makes it very easy. One app handles everything. It processes payment as well as points and coupons. Isn't that convenient? FaceGo technology allows users to make easy payments through face authentication without needing to take their smartphone out. Using a small terminal, AI Pay makes it possible to simply payment at the cash counter and reduce the cost. AI Pay uses big data to recommend the most beneficial payment method points and coupons according to users' consumption behavior and provide using information about merchants through information matching. The AI Pay model doesn't merely depend only on the income from payment settlement fee without contributing to the value chain in the existing payment structure. AI utilizes big data to create a new earning structure. AI Pay provides the best services that you've never experienced by the marketing. It's possible to identify the best payment method in the real time based on the consumer behavior. An affiliated company in the US obtained a patent for the AI Pay technology and has applied for an international patent. In Japan, we've obtained a patent for the technology. Its cashier system is highly regarded in Japan and around the world. Leveraging close business cooperation with existing partners that allow modification of the existing payment system in a way that doesn't overwhelm users. This new platform will encounter few if any problems. A cashier's point campaign led by the Ministry of Economy. Trade and industry succeeded in increasing the number of merchants from 500,000 to 1,150,000 merchants as of June 2020.
payment transactions reached 7.9 trillion yen during the campaign period while the number of the transactions reached 3 billion. Japan aims to achieve a 40% cash rate by 2025. We aim to achieve income not only from the number of AI pay transactions, but also through the establishment of the new earning structure using AI and big data. In the payment settlement industry, where it is hard to modify cross-sectionally, AI pay allows collaboration with a wide variety of services, increases convenience for the users and merchants, and creates new and desired payment style. All right, that was AI Pay with some very interesting technology and a very slick video. Up next, we have Credify with Service X. I'm Xu, co-founder of Credify. Financial services face extremely high customer acquisition costs. These services try to reach out to potential users through like Facebook, Google, or some channels like that. But these channels are not always accurate about user segmentation. Also, onboarding processes for financial services are causing a bad user experience due to KYC or a lot of paperwork and registration process. And this is also in costing the financial institutions $300 per successful conversion in average. So Credify is addressing this issue with two technologies, IDX and ServiceX. And IDX is a self-sovereign identity system where users can control the data themselves. But Credify is not holding any information about users. And users can go through verification process like SMS, email, and KYC. And they can attach their information provided by a trusted data source in Credify, like a bank or a credit scoring company. These companies can provide the data to Credify users. And ServiceX is an eminent finance platform built on top of IDX. So ServiceX enables enterprises cross over the services across the Credify network. So let's think about Rakuten ecosystem. So we are connecting different companies just like Rakuten, but so we can connect a completely different company using our IDX system. And we believe that financial service and embedded finance are the future of digital client engagement for financial institutions. Next, let's go to ServiceX dashboard. Let's say I'm a marketer working for OCB, and in this screen, I'm gonna create a new offer and I can select, I will select industries that I'm interested in and I will select banner image and I will input offer's name and offer's description and from when to when. And I can, so I can see available data sources or marketplace where I can get users from. I'm gonna set up um, e-commerce Sendo and I can see available data pieces provided by Sendo and here I can see pricing as well so Sendo score is provided for one dollar and total payment amount is provided for one dollar so each data access I have to pay this amount of money for successful conversion in this screen I can set up threshold of this offer so I can set up threshold against Sendo score and say I will set from 0 to 99. In Sendo platform, users who falls into falls under this range can, can see this offer. And also I can set up multiple level so that I can personalize this offer to each user in Sendo. And I will set up level one, level two, level three. And the right, so right, right top side, you can see how many users I can reach out to across Sendo. 
everything is dynamically changed but Clarify is not holding any information about actual Sendo data so Clarify is just referring metadata of Sendo and now I can see preview and I will confirm to create a new offer that's it in this process I didn't have any visibility about actual Sendo users data but I can create personalized offer very simply let's see the flow of end users now I'm a user of Sendo not Credify yet so Sendo is e-commerce platform in Vietnam and I open Sendo web application and I can see a banner that says I can get more benefit and when I when I tap the banner I can see available deals using my data so Sendo has data about myself and Sendo is personalizing the deal using Credify system and I'm interested in getting an offer from OCB, a local bank in Vietnam. And I will set up my password to enable this process. So once I set up my password, I have to log in using the same password. And now I can see my, my, my data and consent page. So I can select which information I will share with OCB from Sendo. And when I change the consent, then this offer will change dynamically and let's say I'm interested in getting full offer so I'm going to share Sendo score and total payment amount to OCB and when I authorize this then OCB can get data from Sendo and my onboarding process to OCB is done it's quite simple and this is using OpenID Connect which is a standard of internet Clarify has two business models SaaS and white labeling. In ServiceNX, service providers can acquire new users. And in each successful conversion, service providers will have to pay commission for data providers, user providers. And Clarify will take 20% of each transaction. And on the other hand, in white labeling solution, Clarify will charge one of implementation fee and monthly license and maintenance fee. Last year, Clarify deployed the first application application of IDX in Japan so we had revenue last year the Clarify team is quite unique and diverse so the CEO Makoto is from the US but not right to Japan so we met in Tokyo and I'm from Japan learn machine learning in Tokyo to Todai and Maurizio our CFO is from Italy and he has really long experience in finance background we started in Singapore because our intention is building global product not only the Japanese product. So we set up company in Singapore two years ago and we have subsidiary in Tokyo and Saigon in, in Vietnam. Thank you. And that was Credify with Service X, certainly making things simpler in a very complicated field. Up next we have Hi Jojo Partners with HiJojo.com. Hi, I'm CEO and founder of Jojo Partners, Spearmentus. Nice to meet you all. Thanks for having us today. Uh, before I dive into my presentation, let me share a quick story on how I founded the company. A few years ago, I was working at a big investment bank called Mizuho. And uh, most recently, I worked as uh, one of the members of the investment department, looking around for investment ideas and so forth. And it occurred to me that one of my favorite companies, run by Elon Musk, SpaceX, was actually available to trade. So I spoke to a few friends in the US and tried to purchase some shares. But unfortunately, the minimum size we could transact was $5 million, about 500 million yen, which was obviously a little bit too pricey. So I turned down the offer, but my friend came back the next day and told me that he diced it up into small pieces, but found out that it was only $2.5 million, which wasn't small enough. So in the end, I turned it down. And a few days later, having dinner with my friends, I told them what happened. And they were actually all very eager to invest into SpaceX as well. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to open up new investment ideas. And that's how I founded Hirojo Partners. So with that, let me dive into the presentation. 
Um, as most of you already know by now, Japan is having a major issue on lots of cash sitting in banks, and the government trying to push savings to investments has not really happened. If you look at US and Japan, US having almost close to half of their assets invested into equities, Japan on the other hand only has 10% plus. So if you look at the cash and deposits in Japan, it's almost equivalent to what US has. So that means there's almost uh, about um, $10 trillion worth of cash sitting in Japanese banks. And this, is, this has always been a big issue that the government has tried to pursue, but obviously with no luck. And I was thinking this of an analogy similar to the North Wind and the Sun. The government, financial institutions, everyone trying to push people from savings to investments, while for some reason the sun is not there. There are obviously many reasons why it's not happening. And we feel that the second point, the lack of attract attractive investment opportunities for investors is one of the key issues. Obviously, there are attractive investment opportunities out there. Some are more attractive, some are less attractive. And if you look at the US uh, IPO market, which all of you know has been booming a lot, um, the public market performance, if you were to hold an IPO stock up, up until uh, September last year for big uh, VC-backed tech IPOs, the performance is really good. But if you invested pre-IPO, then it would have been a massive return. And there's a reason for that. Uh, back in the 1990s, many US companies listed as a small company and grew after time. But things started to have a change right around Google and especially after Facebook, when Facebook listed as a $100 billion company. So the company grew big enough, or actually too big, while it was private. And after the company goes public, the growth is much smaller. But investing into private equities is no, not a low risk, low return game. Um, if you invest in early stage startups, the risk is much higher. And if you, lift, lift, uh, if you invest into mid to late stage companies, the risk is lower, but the return, you can have decent return. So this is basically where we're acting on. So um, apologies, but this is one of our bragging slides. Um, in the last two years, we've invested into late stage companies, mostly in the US, some in Israel, and some in Japan. And uh, fortunately, we already have companies that went public, uh, Palantir through direct listing, SoFi announced a SPAC merger, as well as 23andMe. And hopefully we'll have a few more. And in terms of the assets that we've collected, um, we started in 2018 and collected close to uh, 10 billion yen in assets, which is much more than aggregate of equity-based crowdfunding and shareholders committee. But we are still only at the starting line. What we want to achieve going forth. From 2018, we started with face-to-face -face sales, and now we're actually moving on to online sales, which I'll explain in detail a bit more. But our end game is to create a platform where people can buy and sell private equities, fund holdings, and make this private equity more accessible. It's not an easy game in Japan because of many regulations, restrictions, but we're very fortunate to have a very strong team with a strong background and already licensed as a type two financial instruments business, as well as many other licenses. To go a little bit deeper into what we're going to be achieving in the very near, near future is launching the Hijojo Unicorn Fund. In a nutshell, basically retail investors will be able to invest into US unicorn investment opportunities from as small as 1 million yen, fully online, carefree, and we'll be providing details on financials to make it a transparent investment. The market opportunity is massive. The uh, investor base we're looking for will be total of about 800 trillion yen. And this is how the uh, service is going to look like. So people will be able to invest online 
through our uh, registered app. We'll have enough financials, we'll have enough information and updates as they go along. So thank you for listening to us. We will be continuing to improve the access to the private markets. Thank you very much. And that was Hijojo Partners, helping people invest in the private market. Up next, we have a word from one of our supporters, Mitsubishi Estate. そのものにはまだまだ力があって、で、場の力っていうところが非常に重要だと思います。テナント今、All right, that was a word from one of our supporters, Mitsubishi Estate, and now we'd like to get back to the pitches. Next up is our fourth entry, 400F, with Money Health Check. Hello, everyone. I'm Jin Nakamura from 400F. Today, I would like to talk about reform of financial advice. The revolution that had great impact on society in the modern history was Martin Luther's reformation. Based on the success of this reform were later press printing, the platform from the Roman church, and support of Lord. What we can see is that reform requires technology, empowerment, and funding. So, what is the modern user's pain in the financial advice world? Based on our interviews, various users fears are, feel reluctant to consult a professional, don't know where to start, not aware of financial, my financial situation, and the idea of consultation imitated me. In fact, the world of financial advice has a high level of friction as a user's experience, even though it is fairly simple. So we made a money health check called Okane no Kenko Shindan. As a technology, we provide users with frictionless services. Answer 30 questions and registered by line or email. After that, if you wait, you will receive advice from the advisors. Very simple. And we also empowered the financial advisors. We provide a platform where the needs match. Financial advisors can leverage this platform to access users who could not be approached offline. The advisors choose the users from the da our database, or maybe users financial condition and the right message, and send a message and match with the potential clients. So let's see the demo. 
First, the user answers about 30 money questions. And users answers, user can check the health status of money compared to people of the same gen generation in the same area. Then enter user's worries about money. Then it will be registered in the database of the financial advisor's site. The financial advisors look at the user's information and gives advice. And the user can check the advice from the financial advisors and check the profile and chat with them. The fundraise. We raised 200 million yen in 3 sale round from Dimension, Money Forward, Loet Marketing, GoFern, and Good Patch. And we also had a business alliance, alliance meant with Money Forward and Loyalty Marketing, which provide a point services called Ponta. So our business model for the user size, no fees, comprehensive general of financial advice, and they can chat with multiple advisors. For the financial advisor side, they can chat with up to 20 users in 1,400-800 yen per month. And then they can chat with more than 21 users, 600 yen per users. And they can upload users all over the Japan. The business also growing steadily with 10 times more users and seven times more financial companies uh, than a year ago. The market potential of our business is also very large. Our platform target the mass users with financial assets of less than 100 million yen who have not received sufficient financial advice so far and has 52.7 million households. And there are 1.9 million financial professionals also provides the financial services. The business is provided by highly skilled and experienced members from Nomura Securities, Mitsubishi Morgan Stanley, Dite Life Insurance, Kukpat, Leti, and DMM. Thank you for listening and we will make information in the financial advice world. Goodbye. That was 400F with Money Health Check, helping ordinary people get financial advice. And up next, our fifth entry is EFIT with Quoria Corporate Plan. We resolve the absurdity of the financial industry. I'm Saito from EFIT. We develop Qualia, which is an automatic trading service that anyone can easily use for AI investment. The service was born from the irrationality of the financial industry that our CEO, Miyahara, held while working for a major securities company. Irrationality of the financial industry is a business model in which financial institutions force customers. For example, financial institutions design products such as investment trusts and do face-to-face -face sales in at high cost. As a result, it became difficult for investors to make a profit and only financial institutions were able to make a profit. On the other hand, thanks to online securities, it is possible to select investment stocks and make a portfolio by yourself. However, only a very limited number of people with time and financial literacy can do so. Instead, everyone can easily design their own financial products and share products with others. And we would like to create a society where individual investors can enjoy profits. Our mission is to provide truly user-first financial services. And Qualia solves this financial industry irrationality. Qualia is a service that can be used 
easily and in no time without knowledge. It is a mechanism. Qualia is a C2C platform where users are divided into two parts. The robots creators are on the left. You can create an automated trading robots by combining robot parts at least five minutes. You can receive incentives according to the robot's performance. Investors are on the right. Investors are free to choose which robots the creator has delivered to Qualia. It is a service that can be called an investment version of YouTube. I will show you Qualia demo. If you click the Find Robot button, the excellent robot judged by AI will be displayed in order. After that, decide robots and click the Start Automatic Trading button. It's complete. Then, the robot will automatically buy and sell according to the algorithm. It's very simple. Qualia platform currently has more than 3,000 robots, all you can choose. The actual performance is also open. This is a figure for the month of December 2020, and the average monthly interest rate for all users is 39.3%. And the winning percentage was 84.5%, despite the huge volatility of the market. It is a church system. The initial cost is $0. The model is, is the such that monthly costs are incurred according to the monthly transaction volume. It is possible to easily start automatic trading simply by linking with a securities company's buyer API and selecting a robot. Next is, is, next is the impact on financial markets. We aim at potential asset management market. It is said that there are $8.5 trillion in personal cash and deposits in Japan. More than 52% of them are potentially invested money. Japan is the only country in the world that is so heavily deposit-oriented. This will not revitalize the economy. That is clear about competitive advantage when you actually look at the next slide. The advantage of Qualia is that it is, trading, it is a trading service. The average AUM per user is $2,092. The DTV is also $1.1 million. Qualia has 20 times more potential for AUM and 100 times more potential for trading volume than online securities. Next is the innovation of a business model. The point is the API economy. It is predicted that the market size will exceed $20 trillion by 2022. As major companies open up the use of APIs for their services, our demand will continue to grow. Next is business growth potential. Let's look at GMV first. Qualia has been a service for about two years since it started, but it has become a GMV of about $1.9 billion. The first is the potential to meet investor needs. Currently, Qualia can trade in 11 currencies, including Bitcoin and FX. We plan to expand these targets to more than 4,000 types of investment destinations, such as stocks, futures, and ETFs. The second point is the existence of the Qualia corporate plan. Until now, users have been trading using existing APIs. However, by preparing a package for corporations, it has become possible to directly link not only with the APIs, but also inside the system, and to support and customize financial original products desired by securities companies. It has been decided to collaborate with two new securities companies. In addition, there are three merits of introducing a corporate plan. CPA is lowered, churn rate is also lowered, and high profit can be expected. It is possible to improve the problems of securities companies. The third point of business growth is C2C. The users create robots and prepares an incentive design for them. As a result, we have the advantage of increasing contents every day, and we think it will be difficult for other companies to enter the market from the warm. Currently, we have 12,000 users for two years. Next is the possibility of becoming a global service. The point is that we have acquired the Japanese investment advisory business 
which is said to be strict worldwide. We believe that the reliability of obtaining a license in the harsh country of Japan will contribute to global expansion in the future. We operate a service with such great potential with about 10 excellent members. Our members are good at finance, IT, and design, and we will continue to pursue business goals. Thank you for listening. All right, that was EFIT bringing artificial intelligence into investing. And up next in our sixth entry, we have Finitext with Inspire. Hi, my name is Kazuhiro Kawabata. I'm leading InsurTech business in Finatex Group. I'd like to introduce our insurance as a service, Inspire, a front-to-end enterprise SaaS to build digital insurance. With a mission to reinvent finance as a service, we aim to drive industry-wide DX digital transformation by providing cloud-based API-driven financial infrastructure. Then, where does the insurance industry stand on the DX agenda? In the insurance industry, there is an aspiration to promote DX by growing new insurance services from a small start. The reality is though, legacy systems are way too heavy, and they are holding us back from moving forward. For example, if you want to add a single rider to an insurance policy, you need to add several columns to the database and adjust the related systems. However, for legacy systems, this is said to take two to three years of development and an investment of hundreds of millions of yen to run a major IT vendor for that period. This level of investment requirement prevents from companies to start small. So, the solution we offer is a cloud-based API-driven insurance infrastructure. I'd like to introduce three significant features of Inspire. The first is that it is a front-to-end solution for insurance operations. Existing legacy systems are so complex and tightly coupled that even a small modification can cost a lot of time and money. With Inspire, you can create a digital avatar outside of this legacy system and start a new business. Secondly, Inspire's business model is a SaaS model rather than the traditional outsource development model. In developing Inspire, we fundamentally reinvent the insurance business and design a flexible architecture. As a result, we were able to significantly reduce the need for individual company specific support. It is more than 90% of initial cost compared to traditional IT vendor systems and make five times faster. The third point is high flexibility and expandability. Although Inspire is a packaged system, it is easy to use parts of it, add functions, and collaborate with external organizations. Besides, Inspire itself will continue to evolve and support the next generation of business operation for insurance companies. Now, let me show you our demo. I'll show you an admin screen operated by an insurance company. First, this is the policy management screen. You can see how to check and manage customer information and contract details. The modern UI design allows for smooth contract management operations and quick access to specific contract information. Next is the management screen for insurance product information. 
This is the most different part from other insurance business management systems. As you can see, you can almost complete the setup of an insurance product by entering the product information on just a few pages. This is where Inspire's most outstanding innovation lies. With Inspire, you can add an edit product information as easily as creating a questionnaire in a Google form. It used to take years with traditional systems due to the large amount of coding and validation work required. But we can make it complete in a few days or weeks with Inspire. Digital micro hokeno speedy ni tenkai するために外部接続のしやすい SARS 型のインスパイアを使って構築したデジタル募集基盤。これはまさに我々が求めていたものでした。インスパイアはデータベースの構造が従来システムとは全く異なっていて、当社ではかつてないスピード感で開発が完了しました。当社内ではこのデジタル募集基盤で新たなビジネス展開が加速するととても大きな期待があります。That was a quick introduction of Finatechist Insurance as a Service, Inspire. Through this cloud service that supports the reinstart of digital insurance sales, we aim to bring much better user experience by digital technology. Our goal is to reinvent insurance so that it can benefit more people's lives. Thank you. And that was Finatext, bringing digital transformation to the insurance industry. And now, a video from a supporter company, GMO Aozora NetBank. GMO! GMO! 痛いわけじゃない勇気を出して進もう夢を支えるテクノロジーとともにその先の新しい景色を見るために GMO 青空ネット銀行は未来を広げる力になる振込手数料を徹底削減。振込料金独特会員なら、振込手数料が一件百八十円に。振込件数が増えれば増えるほどお得に。G. M. O. 青空ネット銀行で口座開設。That was a video from supporter GMO Aozora NetBank. We have two more startups from Japan left. Next is JPY Yen with JPY Trust Score. Thank you for giving us your valuable time. My name is Akiyama from JPY Inc. It is written as JPY and pronounced as Yen. As you may have noticed, it's a currency code. The subject for today's presentation is trust scoring for foreign residents to have financial identity. Yen is a business in the regtech domain in the fintech field. We are an international money transfer company, and most of our customers are foreign residents. Currently, foreign residents are increasing every year, but the development of financial services for them are still behind. On the other hand, as financial institutions respond to foreign residents, Aren't they in a difficult situation having to deal with the resale of accounts and money laundering while the obligation to comply with regulations is increasing? This is a change in the number of foreign residents and the number of foreigners by status of residence. As you can see from the graph, it is increasing every year. Under these circumstances, Yen's goals are to comply with regulations effectively and efficiently. To provide cost reduction measures for financial institutions, and to increase customer satisfaction of financial institutions, we would like to contribute to the achievement of these three objectives and revitalize the entire financial industry. Yen's goal 
is to achieve financial integrity. By knowing how foreign residents think and act, it becomes possible to understand the financial fraud process as well. We think it is important to have a mechanism that can evaluate correct behavior after understanding it. One of the criteria that we use to make the correct evaluation is by determining the user's behavior. For example, you can detect differences by comparing the number of individual remittances among the majority of customers or by comparing them with their past actions. Also, by sharing a lot of personal information, you can think of it as an action that you are not illegally involved. For example, looking at the status of residents and the amount of remittance, the amount of remittance tends to be higher for specific skills than for technical intern training. If you frequently send money over 100,000 yen, there must be a reason. Nationality and purpose of remittance also have a combined effect. In the Philippines, the amount of money sent tends to increase around Christmas time. This is an example that cannot be judged simply by staying in Japan. AI and deep learning are very compatible with scoring transaction data for international remittances, and we plan to make the knowledge of yen into AI in the future. Currently, each company is individually working on AML countermeasures for the database risk. We would like to release the data as a score and make it a platform. Credit scores are gradually gaining in popularity in Japan, but many Japanese people are still reluctant to provide personal information and privacy. I think that foreign residents will actively provide information if the convenience and daily life is improved by providing the personal information rather than protecting privacy. JPY Trust Score hopes to achieve more comprehensive scoring in the future in collaboration with businesses that provide services for foreign residents. Comprehensive scoring can also be used as credit information for large financial services. This will create a world in which foreign residents who continue to act correctly and are evaluated can have a financial identity. Last but not least, we believe that our role is to make users who use fintech happy. The JPY Trust Score evaluates a user's behavior and gives them a financial identity. By holding financial identity and properly adhering to rules and regulations, even foreign residents will be able to be evaluated. If credit scoring allows a foreign resident to have their own financial identity, this will create new opportunities for consumer options. We believe that a country where this is achieved will be a country chosen by many foreigners. This is our medium to long-term business plan. For step one, we plan to have the release of beta version of our EKYC system for foreign residents in April. Step two, we plan to have introduced and started operation by international remittance to Indonesia in May. Step three, we plan to have the EKYC Global Center built in June. Step four, we plan the start of our AML credit scoring service for foreign residents in July. And finally, for step five, a universal alert service demonstration experiment started for domestic remittance companies. This is our quick company overview. This is our team. And lastly, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. That was JPY Yen, providing financial identities for foreigners. Next is the last pitch from Startups from Japan, Dot .data with Dot .data. Hello, everyone. This is Ryohei Fujimaki, CEO at Dot .data. Dot .data is AI automation platform to democratize data-driven digital transformation. So let me start sharing my screen. So there is no doubt that AI is the most critical investment area for financial services, but there are three critical challenges, skill, speed, and value. First, AI and machine learning are simply very difficult. Unless you have hundreds of data scientists, the skill barrier is still very, very high. Second, AI and machine learning project goes never fast enough. Even proof of concept often takes more than six months and it slows down to adapt AI in your businesses. Third, maybe most of you have already experienced, but POC went well in a desktop verification, but it failed to be productionized. The value of AI is still very limited against its huge potential. 
In this uncertain economic downturn, it is critical to proceed AI project more efficiently and faster than ever before. Dot data is going to address these challenges and unlock AI values through automation. To understand the challenge, let's see why AI and machine learning are so difficult. It is not a single magic AI box, but it is a chain of very complex manual operations from raw data through lots of data manipulations to machine learning and statistics. In particular, the hardest core part is to process the data to discover important patterns based on your data knowledge and more importantly, based on your domain knowledge. This is called a feature engineering, taking often months to complete. Overall, the process is very complex, time consuming and error prone. Our solution is to automate this process based on our proprietary algorithms. Dot data directly connect with your database, determine the best way to extract important and critical patterns from data, and optimize various machine learning models for your choice. It sounds like a magic, but why only dot data can automate this entire process? Let's think about fraud detection. You have payment history, billing history, customer demographics, web access log, and so on and so forth, like left-hand side. To detect fraud, we have to extract a hypothesis. For example, what transaction or patterns are suspicious before dot data Finding, discovering critical uh, hypothesis was 100% relies on intuition and experience of domain experts. Now with dot data, our AI algorithm discovers a critical hypothesis that you have even never imagined. This automation feature engineering is our unique magic weapon to allow only dot data to automate the entire process. So what values our automation deliver to financial services? First, we enable more people to use AI. Technical operations are automated by dot data. This scales your AI practices and establish data-driven organization. Second, we make AI project 10 times faster. This means you can try 10 times more use cases and find the highest impact use case much faster. Third, our automated feature engineering delivers new business insight in a transparent manner. It is designed to be white box, white box so that you can utilize our features in your business. The way to use dot data is very straightforward. Let's see how does it work. Step one is loading data. It's very simple to load the data first, you just need to connect with your database like this, and then select whichever table you want to import, and then just click import, that's all. Of course, you can drag and drop your local CSV file. And now, step two, where magic happens, build the features and the models. There's a couple of steps. First step is to tell machine what you want to predict. So this is a mortgage application prediction. So I just uh, select a mortgage application flag column and provide sample ID. Now I tell machine which table I want to use. One, two, three, four, five tables. In this case, I want to use five tables to build the features and the model. And in principle, this is only information I have to provide to the machine. And now behind the, behind the platform, a lot of magic is happening to discover the critical features and optimize machine learning models. After computation, as a step three, you are ready to go. There's a lot of optimized machine learning model and you can analyze its accuracy. And more importantly, machine produce a lot of explanations about the features and you can analyze these features to get a deeper insight. So, here, let me introduce some of our customer success in financial services. Payment and billing SaaS customer increased more than 1% revenue with smart dunning using our automation platform. 
global property and casualty insurance achieved 250% conversion rate using AI policy recommended recommendation. They are running hundreds of machine learning models developed by Dot Data. Trust Fund customer increased the contract rate of certificate of deposit 10 times uh, uh, using e AI enabled digital sales. There's a much more use cases that Dot Data can address in financial services. We are looking forward to joint uh, development of your critical use cases and partnership opportunities, such area as data monetization, digital transformation, AI enabled product development, and AI staff education. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And please contact us at contactj at .data.com or visit our website. Thank you very much. That was dot data allowing for the swift implementation of AI. And up next, we have a special message from abroad. Ms. Gila Boscovich is head of FinTech and RegTech Partnerships Rainmaking Innovation and is also a global advisor here at FinnoLab. Well, to everyone who has submitted their pitch for a Finno pitch review, uh, first off, good luck. Secondly, way to go and congratulations. It's a really difficult thing in this particular time and, and space in history to try to convey the value proposition that you're bringing to market. And for all of those who have taken the risk and are trying to be entrepreneurs and who are making an effort to bring something of value to the market that's never been seen before, Congratulations, you deserve support. You deserve all of the encouragement you could possibly get. And you've joined a fantastic community of those who are thinking at the forefront of financial services. Just a quick reminder, what do you do, why you do it, and why does it matter to me? And then tell me about how you do it. But first and foremost, tell me big picture, what is it you truly do? It's not about the technology, it's about the end result, how you impact customers' lives for the good and how you actually look at sustainability and your impact on the rest of the community environment. So congratulations again, and I wish you all the best of luck. Finna pitch, it's truly an exciting opportunity. Well done. I suspect once we actually find equilibrium with pandemic and there's a, an adjustment that is not so emotional uh, and the markets start to study and the, the recession that hits actually starts to stabilize. Um, that includes a, a number of government-backed debt scheme reliefs. Uh, the more that the governments are pumping money into the system, perhaps we do find some sort of equilibrium sooner rather than later than leaving it to the capital markets. But I have to say, if you've got if you've got a dream to bring the business to market, and it is purely digital centric, customer centric, um, digital native sort of approach, then you're better off than trying to blend something, uh, you know, a hybrid approach that that was kind of the trend you know, two three years ago. So, I'm optimistic, but I realize that it's been a massive hit to you know fintech startups all around the globe. Again, I go back to where there is uh, chaos and confusion, there is always opportunity. <laughs> and there's always, mm -hmm. a, you know, there's always um, money to be made there. And I think if we start to focus on where the real challenges are right now, which is around trade and supply chain and, mm -hmm. and smooth that supply chain and efficient movement of goods and services across the globe, that that also helps small businesses uh, there's an attraction for small businesses who are who are um, banked by large institutions, but it also means that there's uh, there's massive arbitrage in in terms of where shipping and freight and logistics uh, intersect with finance, and I think that's a massive area of opportunity. 
And the other thing that actually is quite interesting is that consumers are starting to, consumers being corporates and individuals, are starting to make uh, their own values known by how their money is spent. And we're much more aware of value spending and much more aware of how our, our money does dictate to the market what we want to see. And that is a lot of a shift towards environmental sustainability, some of the sustainability development goals around education, um, water cleanliness and access to, to clean water, access to basic medical services, all of those things that are sort of encapsulated in uh, ESGs and uh, SDGs are now sort of Taking, uh, taking center stage, that even when we start to invest in mutual funds, we're looking at the composition of those mutual funds and the companies uh, and their carbon footprint, uh, anything that they're doing to make the world greener and more sustainable. We're starting to back those uh, more frequently. And a lot of the technology uh, investment apps that are coming up are also focused on um, value investment. And uh, it, we're starting to shop with companies that do the same. And companies are very aware of political movements and political uh, discussions and how that actually impacts our local communities. So in principle, I think that if it's focused on environmental and sustainable development goals and those sort of values that FinTech also has a place and also- And a big thanks to Gila Boscovich for her inspiring message and her insights. Now, up next, we have our entrants from abroad. As I mentioned before, we would like for you to vote. So if you could go to the QR code that we're displaying right now, there you'll be able to make your vote and have your voice heard for the Viewer's Choice Award. And now our first entry, which is from Blue Fire AI with early warning of unforeseen risk. Hello, my name is um, Luke Waddington. Um, I'm the um, CEO and co-founder of Blue Fire AI. Um, just to go straight to you know, the problem that we solve. Uh, basically, we work with investment banks and with asset managers, and our job, our role and responsibility with our clients is to try and give early warning of unforeseen risk uh, in listed companies. And so what we do is we look for the bad apple and be able to give advance warning that there may be a problem. Where did this come from? Well, about two and a half years ago, there was a big collapse in the market of a company called Steinhoff, which cost the banks uh, around more than a billion dollars in total. So we were brought in by a major US investment bank to start to look at the mitigation of that. So this took us to look at the operational side of risk in terms of the risk officers, the risk analysts, the risk process, the data available. It also took us into the dealing room floor and speaking with trading on how they took risk onto the books and how they manage risk and price some of that to the products associated with risk. And what we found was that there's a lot of high valuable resources. The systems are quite robust. They make good decisions. So why did we miss it? That becomes a central question. Why did we miss it? And this comes down to a very important word, unforeseen risk. And what we mean by unforeseen risk is that there's been an explosion in information around companies. There's lots of information out there, but it takes time to curate and distill that into these systems. So our job is to use technology at scale and at precision to try and get that information, that unforeseen information into these processes and therefore give early warning of potential stress. Let's quickly go to the point of how do we do this? So think of us like a Fitbit on the wrist of a company, always monitoring for the health. We look at company fundamentals, the balance sheet, the cash flow statements, and we look forensically to try and find patterns of stress. We look at risk events, systemize that big task of reading around financial media reports on the company every day. And we start to put reading and sense-making technologies at play to try and systemize that into the risk process. And we do that in English. And we've also built very specific technologies to do that in Mandarin for onshore China risk. We also track the street and we look at perception changes in the company. So we track buy side investors, and we ask the question, is there somebody out there who is transacting information that you don't know? And they've got a very good track record. We also look at analysts 
and we look at their ability to forecast cash flows accurately over time in that company, and we create smart cohorts that we track. We also look at market indicators, and we look at the behavior of the bonds and the equities of that company. And we really ask the question here is, has the wider market started to pick this up and started to transact and sell into those assets? Um, and, and really now this is where the stress is starting to materialize. So a quick introduction to the product. What we did is we didn't build a big platform and expect you to learn lots of function. What we did is put a bot on top of that called Emmeline. And Emmeline sits on top of that Fitbit. And then when you set the threshold, she tells you when you should start to intervene and start to look at the company because of elevated risk. Uh, and so this is an example of her delivering on one of those chat systems, just like a new employee joining a chat group. You can click through onto the company and then you go into a more glass box view of why and where that risk is starting to build. So then you can click through and you can see the market context of the, the risk of the company. And you can see some base reasoning of why uh, there was triggers. You can also see an event feed, which is specifically curated to events that will have an impact on the company from a risk perspective. We also show a picture of the balance sheet of the company, and we show the uh, funding of the company, the assets of the company, the operational performance of the company, and allow you to bridge into your process and go specifically to parts of the balance sheet or the, or the company research that you would require. So this is an efficient way of getting you to your very valuable process. And we also show a portfolio view. So if you're covering 40, 50, so companies, you can quickly see where your risk is and which ones need investigation and further um, work to, to ascertain the risk. So I think that brings it to a close and hopefully we've demonstrated how we're adding value to our clients and we potentially could add value to you. Um, it would be great to have that conversation, um, especially as we go into this sort of next economic cycle uh, with the COVID pandemic and that critical piece being really the understanding of the risk that you you are holding. So thank you very much for your time. And that was Bluefire AI monitoring companies for unforeseen risks. And up next is our second entry, GK8 with end-to-end -end platform for managing blockchain-based assets. Hi everyone, my name is Leo Lamesh and I'm co-founder and CEO of GK8, cybersecurity company that focuses on blockchain technology. I earned my stripes together with Shachar Shamai, my co-founder, with one of the most uh, toughest neighborhoods for cybersecurity in the world, in the Israeli Prime Minister's office. We were part of an elite team that protected the strategic assets of the country from cybersecurity attacks. We are very much experienced with how to protect from state-level hackers that are willing to invest millions of dollars in order to cause damage of billions. And this is the same approach that we are bringing into the company. We started our journey by hacking ourselves one of the most secure solutions in the market back in 2017, what made us learn that any solution that should communicate securely with the blockchain is exposed to cybersecurity attack vectors. So we tried to think if we can make a fully operational solution to communicate with the blockchain without the need for being connected to the internet, and we ended up doing exactly that. We backed by one of the biggest corporation uh, in Japan, Sumitomo, and by uh, Mario Snart, which is one of the co-founders of Checkpoint, one of the biggest cybersecurity companies in the world that invented the firewall back in time, and a few of more great investors, including one of the biggest banks in Israel, uh, Discount Bank. Now, what we do in short is enabling financial institutions, mainly banks, with a self-managed solution to offer the same financial services that the banks is offering today, such as custody for cryptocurrencies, such as trading, lending, borrowing, and more, with our self-managed solution. So the banks will be able to do the same services that they do today, but with new asset classes. That these new asset classes are based on blockchain. And how we do it? We do it using our unique technology that enabling sending transactions to the blockchain without being connected to the internet. And that's how we are eliminating any potential cybersecurity attack vectors. We do have today clients that managing over $1 billion in digital assets, including eToro, which is one of the biggest uh, cryptocurrencies companies in the world, the social trading platform, 
that's managing hundreds of millions of dollars using our solution, along with uh, Prosegur, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, custody and cash logistic company in Europe and Latin America, managing over 440 billion euros. And now they're making digital transformation to offer the same services, but for blockchain-based assets, such as cryptocurrencies, and are doing it using GKA technology. So the opportunity where we are at is that the economic wealth is becoming digitalized, while the cryptocurrency market is around 1 trillion. And as time go on, more and more traditional asset classes such as securities, real estate, stocks, are becoming digitalized and even based on blockchain, which is making this market going aggressively. Now, the global regulation in 2020 was approved very fast, what made different top tier banks in Germany, in the US, in the UAE, even in Russia, to offer the same services that they do today for uh, traditional assets, but for cryptocurrencies, while the most simple basic usage is crypto custody, which is the first service that can be offered using our solution. It should be understood we are not bank ourselves, we are not providing third party custody service, we are enabling the banks that work with us with the self managed solution, we are their technology partners, so they can offer services themselves. Now, the problem that we are solving is the security one, as billions of dollars were stolen in the past years. One billion in 2018, 4.6 in 2019. It's mainly from cryptocurrency exchanges that managed cryptocurrencies. But now, when banks are joining the game, the problem becomes even more painful as they are managing way more money and hackers are becoming more incentivized. Hacking events were reported weekly and monthly, and a large amount of money was stolen every time. And this is the problem that we are solving. Now, in short, the core tech challenge is that blockchain is interactive protocol, means it requires bidirectional connectivity to the public internet in every transaction that you make. And that's why any existing solution, doesn't matter if it's auto wallet based on multi-signature or multi-party computation, you are constantly exposed to cybersecurity attack vector because all of what hackers need to do is in order to make a full transaction using the bank's private keys, is only compromise two or three different computers, two or three different machines, either on premise or on cloud. And that's all you need in order to take control on the full environment and steal the private key and steal the money. While on the other end, when it comes to cold wallet solutions, we claim that they are not really cold because every cold wallet solution in the market use some kind of bi-directional connectivity, like a USB cable, HSM that's connected bi-directionally, or some kind of time driver or SD card in order to take mandatory information from the public blockchain to another computer that's supposed to be air gapped. But the instant when you take something that was connected to the internet to another computer that's supposed to be air gapped is not air gapped anymore. And that's why it's exposed to cybersecurity attack vectors. Now, unlike that, our unique value proposition is our ability to create the full process of creating, signing, and sending blockchain transactions without the need for receiving any input from the blockchain and from the internet at any part and at any point, or making everything stand alone completely. And that's what letting us to use our unique approach of outbound unidirectional communication to send already signed transaction without receiving any input from the internet that may cause to attack vector from cybersecurity, which we avoid. So we use only outbound unidirectional communication, and then we build different cryptography protocols around it to achieve all of the necessary functionality without compromising security. The system is end-to-end -end platform that combining different layers from cold vault that managing the majority of the assets to MPC that managing small amount of money and meant to be used for automatic transactions, including API and SDK that is connected to uh, different uh, endpoints, which are mobile and desktop, all the existing business logics of the bank. Inviting you to join our journey as we are bringing the much needed security to this rapidly growing market. And I inviting you to make these new revenue streams in the blockchain based assets. Thank you so much. That was GK8 making blockchain safer. Next is the third entry, Hedgespa with Hedgespa core investment platform. My name is Bernard Lee. I'm the founder and CEO of Hedgespa. In the current low yield and high volatility market, 
Hedgebond offers a professional investment platform that removes complexity, delivers a one-stop solution, improves performance, reduces volatility, streamlines processes, shortens implementation timescales, and finally lower costs. The platform offers an out-of-the-box solution that meets a variety of needs with end-to-end -end functionality ranging from asset selection to portfolio rebalancing to decision execution and to client reporting. It's powered by big data, AI, multi-scenarios, actuarial math, and extreme computing and come with out-of-the-box data and transaction connectivity. These are the target verticals served by our solution with four different service models. Today, we want to showcase our solutions that are most relevant for the Japanese market. Solution one will show how our cloud-based professional investment platform can serve institutional asset managers in general, but more specifically to do capital adequacy calculations for insurance company and pensions. Let us show you how our platform can recommend the best way to manage your assets based on capital adequacy calculations derived from your policy pool. Insurance companies and pensions gain access to asset liability management and direct estimates of policy pool liability profiles, as well as tail risk views with confidence as high as 99.93%. The platform takes care of calculating cap capital adequacy ratios and cuts out middlemen costs to help meet liability requirements in a low yield environment. This is a simple example of what our powerful analytics can do for an insurance company. Let us show you how to perform asset liability management for capital adequacy purposes. Let's select a sample life insurance portfolio. Our users can customize the actuarial assumptions on the liability side, such as mortality and premium tables. We can import this information directly from a policy pool database. Our system is capable of doing automatic rebalancing, including asset selection. We will rebalance our portfolio based on maximizing a capital adequacy calculation known as SCR ratio. Then we select a set of shocks to stress the portfolio based on regulatory requirements and run portfolio rebalancing. The system tells you the adjustments you need to make to your portfolio to lower capital requirements. Our analytics can rebalance the life insurance portfolio in trouble back to health in as soon as two quarters. Again, the strength of our analytics is not hypothetical in that we managed to produce 15% of our performance with no leverage within four and a half months. We would love to work with more partners, users, and advisors in Japan. Solution two will be about our environmental, social, and governance or ESG solution. Welcome to a demonstration of how the Hedgeba investment platform can perform environmental, social, and governance, or ESG, functionalities. The goal of what we want to demonstrate today is different from the common industry practice to use fundamental criteria to screen out companies that do not comply with their ESG criteria. Instead, we think of ESG as a factor that can be used to enhance portfolio performance. Let us give you a demonstration. Imagine your client is looking at a U.S. multi-asset portfolio. First, up top in the portfolio pane, you can choose the portfolio you want to see. To your right, you can see the assets in the portfolio that you can rebalance. We identify the rebalance name based on an AI engine running through hundreds of factors. However, we enhance the methodology with the so-called tail risk so that the calculations will be correct for not just equities, but also for multi-asset portfolios, including bonds, commodities, and other alternative investments. Otherwise, the computer will ignore most of the investments with high tail risk, such as bonds and commodities. Well-cited investment research has found that typically you will need to rebalance no more than 10 to 15 names, even for an institutional portfolio. Now that you have the rebalancing names, we take those names to the bottom of the screen to check if these names are in the right places in their own country industry universe. Why? You only want to buy names on the top of its own universe and sell those from the bottom, not the other way around. This is where our ESG screening comes in. First, fundamental ESG scores can be used as an input factor to our AI engine so that it will screen for ESG results that lead to long-term investment success. Second, fundamental factors tend to be at least six months to one year old. We screen for ESG keywords in news and social media feed relevant to each company, and then assign sentiment scores to the news or social media articles. Then we model out how the sentiment scores based on past data may potentially impact asset returns in the current period. In other words, the rankings incorporate ESG information in proportion to how much they create an impact on asset returns. As a reflection of our success, our work in this area in Japan Korea was cited by Waters Technology, the authoritative American fintech newsletter. We would love to find more ESG data partners and users in Japan. Solution 3 will give example of our direct investment products. 
Besides a portfolio analytics platform, Hedgebar is creating a slate of investment products with a minimum asset under management of 500 million US dollars or 50 trillion yen. This is for investors who choose to place money directly into our investment products. We have spoken to the Japanese Financial Services Agency and are in the process of applying for the appropriate licenses in Japan. As one example, we currently run a portfolio for a major institutional investor. This portfolio produced 15% of alpha in four and a half months during the lockdown with no leverage. In other words, we can create a powerful absolute return product simply by going long the portfolio and short the highly liquid Kospi 200 futures. Another interesting example is a long maturity asset backed security backed by alternative energy products. For instance, under a technology partnership with Georgia Tech, a top five engineering university in the U.S., we are putting in place hydrogen fuel cells to distribute electricity and clean water to islands in the southern Philippines that are not connected to the electricity grid. The hydrogen will be produced using high temperature electrolysis in Australia. The local distributor is a top player in power generation in the Philippines. This will create a multi-year asset-backed deal that can be fully securitized. We have enhanced the deal by attaching carbon credits to them. As a reflection of our success, we were a finalist for a tokenized asset and digital securities award for the Green Energy Finance Fund. We are seeking partnerships with green energy technology providers in Japan and to work with local licensed financial product distributors. Japan is a key market for us. Our investor is so committed to launching in Japan that I have been asked to relocate to Tokyo. Our team is very proven in this space. In particular, I was a managing director at the Portfolio Management Group at BlackRock in New York, where I built award-winning multi-asset functionalities and was active at Nomura BlackRock Asset Management in Tokyo. Our team has won a long list of awards and market recognitions. Please feel free to contact me if you wish to discuss cooperation. Thank you. That was Hedge Spa with automated analysis for hedge funds. Up next, we have our supporter, Ag Venture Lab, with a message. はい皆さんこんにちは J アクセラレーターにようこそアグベンチャーラボの大井野でございます我々 J アクセラレーターは食と脳と暮らしこの周りにある社会課題を解決するスタートアップ企業を支援いたします具体的には JA が持つですねいろんなアセットあるいはネットワークを使って皆さんの事業を支援いたしますこのプログラム2019年に開始して今回で3回目になります今までの2期で合計300の応募があってその中で15社をご支援させていただきました採択企業にはステージに応じて J グループあるいは農業者との協業を支援したりあるいは出資等のご支援もさせていただいているところでございます我々 J グループ食や農はもちろんのこと銀行保険病院観光新聞、まあ、その他さまざま生活の周りのですね事業も展開していますぜひこういった社会課題に取り組むスタートアップの応募をお待ちしています。求む食と脳と暮らしのイノベーター That was a message from our supporter, Ag Venture Lab. And now we'll go back to the pitches. Our fourth entry is installments with Insto. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Bruce. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Insto. So Insto is essentially a, a payment network, a payment app. Uh, we allow anyone to take credit card payments and installment payments very easily. So I'm gonna give you a very quick demo to show you how we handle uh, all this um, credit card billing. You just uh, launch your install app, and we can support um, first remote billing, 
uh, you do not need to see the customer. You can send the customer uh, send the customer a bill so the customer can pay. For example, you want a bill, you just uh, click on bill. And uh, we support multiple type of uh, payments, like um, a one, one off type of payment, recurring payment, and uh, flexible installments. You can tailor make a, a payment plan. But I'm gonna only demonstrate just a one off type of payment. So you can uh, enter the uh, item. I will just enter test. And you just uh, enter the amount that you need to uh, collect. For example, uh, 500. I just enter 500. And next. And you have multiple ways to uh, send a bill. For example, you can uh, have the customer to enter the credit card info right on your phone or you can send the bill with a text message or email address or you can deliver the bill with any social messaging app for example um, like um, line uh, wechat whatsapp whatever or you can display a qr code uh, for the customers to, to pay for example, here I can uh, send the bill. Uh, let's see. Share. I can share the bill. Uh, see through Facebook Messenger. And I can uh, send it to, say, one person. And. See, here I can just send it. Okay, then the bill is delivered. And then your customer uh, can open the link and submit the payment. And the next function that I would like to uh, give you the demonstration is our Taipang phone, Taipang phone function. Basically, uh, we allow uh, anyone to use our app to take credit card with just uh, the NFC function, tap on the phone to complete the payment. And you can do this face-to-face. Uh, -face. I'll give you a quick demonstration. Uh, here, you just uh, click on tap. And let's say you need to collect 500 NT. And next. And you click on tap. And you take any credit card that has a NFC function and just uh, tap on the phone. And the payment is done. So easy. We allow anyone to uh, accept credit card payment with an app. So um, this is um, uh, very convenient for uh, anyone to uh, take either credit card payment or installment payment. Uh, one thing I haven't uh, demonstrated uh, is our um, installment payment function. So the seller, they can take um, installment payment when they are selling high ticket service or goods. <clears throat> Here is a code install credit and you can send the customer a bill and then once a bill is confirmed, the customer can pay the bill over a certain period of time. For example, one year, two years or three years and the seller uh, can receive the payment upfront. So this is also uh, one of our functions, but uh, it's not available for individuals. It's uh, only available for business sellers. And uh, we are currently available in Taiwan and the US. And uh, we also uh, plan to um, do international expansion, uh, starting from uh, Asia, maybe Japan and uh, Southeast Asia. And we also have some contact uh, in the UAE. So INSTO is going to be a global payment network that uh, allows anyone to take credit card payment and installment payment easily. Thank you. That was installments and their convenient payment platform. Next is our fifth entry, I've won with I've won. Hi, I'm Fong, CEO of I've won. And today I'm gonna to present you our product, which is modernizing the capital markets with blockchain and digital assets. So in general, what's the problem? We have two kinds of sites where we see like different kinds of challenges. So on the first side, we have corporates and corporates 
don't have an infrastructure to access digital securities. And if it's not user-friendly, so it's super technical. Another thing is that on the corporate side, there's a legacy and old IT infrastructure that prevents innovation, especially like blockchain. And also like the issuance of bonds or financial instruments is like really expensive. And also there's a lack of fear due to missing know-how in the blockchain or DLT area. And on the institutional side, there's no possibility for accounting of digital securities. There's no seamless platform that provides access to all asset classes. There's a missing infrastructure to invest, manage and monitor the digital assets. And also like the processes are slow, for example, like settlement, and there's no connector for the different kinds of intermediaries. And therefore, we built our solution IV1. IV1 has two sides. So on the one hand, like a web application where companies and corporates can issue and invest, for example, into digital assets. On the other side, we have an API where corporates can easily connect to our infrastructure. As I said before, our product, the first thing is our platform. And we have like an issuance and this investment and like a compliance layer. So on the issuance side, you can easily tokenize and create like a digital asset on the investment platform. You can easily invest. And in the middle, we have like a global regulation layer which connects different kinds of laws from different kinds of jurisdictions into one place. So it means like we have a global compliance layer for cross-border transactions. And the second product is like our API. So it means like big banks or corporates can easily connect to our infrastructure and access different kind of business processes. Like for example, a digital depot, author authentication, issuance or compliance. I think the simplest way is to show it you in a demo. So let me start. This is now the view uh, for the investor. So it means like I already issued like a digital asset. I created one already for my customer. And my customer now wants, wants to purchase or want to sell, let's say like this, this digital asset. So as you can see, we have like a landing page, which we created for our client and which a lot of information on it. But the main reason is that he can invest. So let's see what happens. So let's click on investing. So, I'm allowed to invest right now. Let's try to do this. So I'm logging in. Oh, and suddenly I can invest into a digital asset, which I want, for example, this one. So let me choose one or five. I want to purchase it. And what's happening now is that I have to give in a couple of information. So let's put like phone number, street, city, postcode. So it's just like a couple of information I'm typing in right now. If I'm a citizen of one of these, I know what's my birth. So it's 12, 12, I need four, for example, place of birth, single. So this is like the whole process to get a little bit more information about like what you're doing. Yeah, so this is like the onboarding process, which is necessary to purchase digital assets. Text information. And now we're coming back to the legal issues. Am I a politically exposed person? Of course I'm not. Confirm. Here we're asking about like the appropriate test. So it means like, what's your knowledge of these kind of financial instruments? I just picked through it. And at the end, it says like, cool, I'm allowed to invest. The next thing is like we integrated identification processes directly into our platform. So it means like you can easily identify yourself to invest into these kind of asset classes or new asset classes. So what we have here, for example, is video identification, EID, and a couple of other ones. So we start, goes through, 
You can click through it. We complete the purchase and we choose the payment method. Bank transfer is fine. So let's transfer this money to the issuer and voila, yeah, I'm at the dashboard from I want investment. As you can see here, I have more information where I can click on it. I can see more information about the product, probably like the data room. And the best thing is even that I can have a look at other asset classes, for example, funds, stocks, whatever. And as I said before, we also have an API, as you can see here. And this one is easily for, for example, investment, where corporates can easily connect now to see, sell, for example, and buy, for example, these kind of tokens. So this must be a really short demo of the product. And what's the idea now with Asia? So in Asia, we really want to focus on sustainable finance. So it means like we really want to go there and put like this ESG stamp into Asia with a proven DLT infrastructure and solution that we provided. We create revenue, we have clients, so it's a track record. And this is what we want to bring to Asia. Thank you very much. And I hope you liked the demo and hear you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was I've Won, supporting companies with their DLT infrastructure. Next is our sixth entry, PayPlus with PayPlus. Hi, my name is James Porter and I am a setup co-founder at PayPlus Gateway. So PayPlus is a payment gateway that allows a safe and quick access to multiple accounts for easy payment. So I would love you to meet Cindy. She's actually a university student and she receives money from our parents in order for our upkeep. Well, for Cindy to make use of the amount that she has received, she's supposed to actually visit the nearest mobile money booth to withdraw the money. Then she's supposed to now visit the nearest chain store in order for her to make some basic purchases. Well, Cindy is not alone. We have about 2.7 million mobile money users that cannot shop online nor offline with their mobile money banks. Well, not only that, we have about 37% increase in account takeover and security fraud. So we are PayPlus, a user-friendly application that integrates both the mobile money accounts and the bank and credit accounts into one application, making online and offline uh, online and offline banking and, and shopping more easy and more convenient. Not only are we doing that, but we're also giving the user the power for transaction management and we're also going to reduce the exposure to online fraud by so doing. So meet our market, about $16 billion is the market estimate for African market only. We are having a serviceable market as pay plus of about $2 billion with these cards for the southern region where mobile money is actually on the peak. And our time is actually only $14 million of which we're having a sum of about $1.7 million. Well, this is how far we've gone with the development of the application. This is actually our application UI, and we're, de we're developing the front end as at the moment, and later on, we'll develop the API and the back end. Well, our business model is to actually be an intermediary. We are actually going to take about 82 cents on every offline transaction and about 75 cents on each and every online transaction that goes through our platform. Despite our competitors having the numbers and having the users, they lack the integration of POS shopping and utility payments in their applications. And this is actually where I would want to leverage on the market as pay plus. Well, our competitive advantage is for us if it is being has having a easy merchant integration and an effective account management. Not only are we doing that, but we're actually trying to pay much attention to security and also trying not only to be the online service, but also trying to be an offline payment gateway. 
So meet the team. My name is James Porter, and I am actually the CDO and co-founder of PayPlus. I'm doing the project development of this application, and I am actually a front-end developer using React Native and React JS in order for me to implement my work. When we have our chief of operation, who happens to be Jonathan Matafari, he is actually good in customer relations. It actually he is good in in, in project management and analysis. We have our CEO who happens to be Mr. Kipson, good in business relation and also good in business development. Why pay plus? Not only are we online, but we are also offline. And most importantly, we are mobile. We're asking for $250,000 for startup development costs and also partnership with banking and telecommunication firms, online and offline retailers. You can kindly actually contact us on the following um, uh, emails for more if you'd want to have any if you want to ask to, to actually answer to any questions well that's it from pay plus thank you very much hi welcome to the pay wallet pay plus let's get started we can actually log in using the touch id and you'll be presented our our home button where you can see our profile pic our accounts, our cards, transaction and statistics, and can easily log out. Or before we actually dive into the cards and transactions, let's look at the sidebar menu, which gives you your personal information. You can change your password, and it could be your accounts. Well, let's look at how we can actually add an account. So, with the plus, it actually enables you to add a bank account, even a mobile money wallet. So, you can easily add those when you press this button. Let's try and add a visa card. So you can actually easily populate the information and click the save button. Well, apart from that, PayPlus is here to actually enable all the mobile money users for them to actually make payments at the point of sale using their mobile money wallets. Well, this is where we get in handy. At this transaction tab, you are able to actually view the payments here and you are able to actually make a payment by POS scan or you can populate the information and just place make payment here. You can also easily send money here where you're able to populate the information and easily choose from which bank account or which mobile money wallet you'd want to actually get that money from. Well, that's about Pay Plus and thank you very much. And that was Pay Plus with their user-friendly payment platform. Up next, we have a message from our supporter, MUFG Innovations Partner Company Limited. Hello, everyone. I'm Nobutake Suzuki, the President and the CEO of MFG Innovation Partners. MFG Innovation Partners, or MAIP, is a corporate venture capital arm of MFG. MFG is the largest banking group in Japan, and one of our advantages is the global coverage. We have two important global markets. One is the US, where we have a union bank as a subsidiary. Also, we own 24% Morgan Stanley, and we have a joint venture with a farm in Japan. The other important market is South Asia, where we have four subsidiary banks in Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Philippines. In terms of collaboration with the fintech startups, we can work together not only in Japan, but also in many other countries. Also, MAG is very much committed to open innovations. I would like to pick up two case studies. The first one is Grab. MAG and MIP jointly invested $700 million in Grab, and MFG has become a first choice bank for Grab. MFG and its subsidiary banks in South Asia have worked with Grab to develop the new financial services for Grab's drivers, merchants, and users. The next is our partnership with the Liquidity Capital. The company is based in Israel, and it has advanced credit underwriting technologies focusing on high-growth startups. MEIP invested in the company in 2019 
and MLG and the company have launched a joint venture in Singapore to provide loans to pre-unicorn startups in Asia. MLG has a track record of investment in fintech, AI, and other startups. MUIHP has succeeded such a major commitment with a $185 million fund since its launch in 2019. MLG and MAP's portfolio include global fintech startups like Coinbase, Symphony, Chainalysis, Figure, Fundbox, Beam in the US, Grab, Industry, Custom in South Asia, and Free, PayD, Money Tree, AB Cash in Japan. Again, we are CBC Fund for MLG and looking forward to working with fintech startups from all over the world. Thank you. That was a message from supporter MUFG Innovations Partner Company Limited. And up next, we have two more startups left. Next is Seeger with 1FX Soul. My name is Milan Kazarka, and I'm the CIO of One of XO. Our mission is to revolutionize how emerging forex traders enter algo trading. We are a proud member of Tech Quartier Germany and have pitched at events such as Startup Life in Vienna or HK Cocoon. We are based heavily around the experiences of our CEO, who has been in forex trading for the last 17 years. But to be concrete, what is our goal? Uh, we want to bring Forex algo trading to the cloud, backed by blockchain. But why do we want to do that and what does that actually mean? Here's the why. Traditionally, small Forex traders running their own office needed to historically set up their own infrastructures. As an example, many small traders have been renting Windows VPS systems and running MT5 on them. MT5 is sort of an industry standard these days for emerging Forex traders. They had problems with, for instance, monitoring these self-baked infrastructures, and they were hardly scalable. There was also a lack of transparency, and disputes between brokers and traders were common occurrence. So what is our solution? A web platform through which you can load and manage as many trading strategies as you like. One which doesn't require you to learn a specific language and supports existing scripts. A solution that stores all transactions in a private blockchain as a means to cross-verify claims by either the broker or trader, and where verification means the same as checking the consistency of the blockchain. Best if the solution had a mobile app where you can receive alerts and notifications. And that's exactly our product. And let me show it to you directly. As a trader, you get a simple web interface through which you can create and manage your strategies. You can load in Python scripts that are MT5 API compatible, whereas we aim for support of C++ very early. Uh, as you run your scripts, uh, you also get a blockchain tab where you can inspect your records. Of course, the scripts, you can run them. Uh, you can pause them, hold them anytime you want. You have profit and loss indicator and all data is locked in the logs uh, so let's say that we do some stopping here we see that the profit and loss has stopped we see all the information in the logs it's as simple as that 
we really didn't want to overcomplicate our solution. Um, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And let's get back to our little presentation. So what is our business model? It's relatively simple. As a trader, you pay for a plan which enables you to run your strategies on a fixed all. It's in essence a standard SAAS, which is where we want to help bring the Forex algo industry so that you're not running some desktop tools in your own cloud. And our GTM has been also very simple. We are currently running one fixel in our internal network. So that's A, our sister company, the trading office of our CEO, and the affiliated traders we know. Um, we are opening up our solution to the public this quarter. When needed, we also develop robots, which was also the case for our own business. And the market size and the market opportunity is really huge. As you can see, we are working with a market of over $11 billion. Um, there are over 9.6 million traders and over 1,400 brokers worldwide. Our aim when thinking about the competition is to provide a simple-to-use solution, but at the same time make it competent. We are hiding the technical complexities and providing a simple tool usable by the average broker and trader compared with the competition. And who is bringing you one fix all? So uh, there is Andreas Andri, our CEO, and he has over 17 years of experience in Forex. And the uh, problems that we are solving with the solution that we are bringing public are his own problems that he has been solving. Um, then we have our CEO, Jean-Carlo Caputi. He has been selling uh, in the fintech market for over two decades. Then there's me. I'm a product development expert. I'm used to bringing products onto the market. The last company I worked at, we did an exit where we sold it to Toyota. Martin Gergel, our CTO, so he's an expert programmer. Really a experienced team. And this is our roadmap and timeline. So we are currently in MVP stage. And as I mentioned, so we are currently running our solution in our internal network and also running it ourselves. And now we are rolling it out to the public. And currently we are also running a fundraising stage and we are planning to roll out, as I mentioned, our solution globally. And that's it. That's one fix all by Seeger GD Limited. Thank you. And that was Seeger with their algorithmic trading solution. And now is our last pitch from a startup outside of Japan, Juice 8 Tech with Juice 8 Tech. Hi, I'm Thorsten, and I'm the creator and founder of Juice 8 Tech. Going back two years ago, I was teaching AI at the university, and one of the students asked me if I can predict Bitcoin prices with the help of AI. And I said, oh, that's hard. We can do machine prediction with IoT data quite well, but financial markets are so event-driven, quite hard to predict. But because I love data and I like especially love financial data, I'm in that space now for more than 15 years, I started developing models and I did not want to spend much time. So I reused existing models, which I developed for IoT and reused them for uh, Juice 8. And as a result, the results were quite good. I could, I was wrong. I could predict the most likely scenarios with a high accuracy. And now, two years later, those models are available to everyone uh, based on the platform I'm going to present to you now. So Juice 8 is a set of pre-trained models. They are already back-tested. So um, you can see how accurate they were in the past days, hours, weeks. And the, they offer you a real-time price forecast from five minutes to many days. And everything is accessible as an API. So you just need to have two, three lines of code and then can easily forecast the most likely scenarios. 
if customers say, for example, we want, don't want to use the standard models, which everyone is using, I want to have a custom model. For example, one of the customers we are working with, um, they are in the polymer space and they want to predict those prices. These are special. Then we can easily use the existing stuff we have set on top those custom AI requirements and put it everything into the platform and it's only accessible to this customer. So uh, if you want to start with Juice 8 and um, that's what I'm going to show you uh, in the second part, it's easy to integrate because everyone has already a data feed, everyone has his, his GUI and Juice 8 is just plugging into this existing environment. Now I'm going to show you two examples how good Juice 8 predictions are. The first one is, for example, the brand price. You see on the screen, the blue line is the forecasted one and the black line on the left side are the highs and lows and closing prices of brand as they existed before the 2nd of January when this prediction was run. And on the 2nd of January, you ask uh, Juice 8, what is the most likely scenario of the future? And then it will dot the blue lines. Now we do the back testing and see how did the brand price flow over the, those days after the 2nd of January. And you see the dotted lines and you see it's pretty accurate. Yeah? So the direction is it a bullish or a bearish market. It's quite accurate. Here's another example. I told you I started with cryptos. On the left side again, the real price of Bitcoin. I wish it was still at 10,000. Should I should have bought more. <laughs> um, you see, this is, for example, the 10th of uh, June last year. And here we have a price prediction for the Bitcoin. And you see pretty accurate the bearish movement which was predicted versus the real bearish movement which happened on this day. And the accuracy of Bitcoin is up to 88% uh, in the first days. And on the worst case, we are at 77%, which is still quite accurate. How can it be integrated? Just a short wrap up. So everyone has ex ex existing data streams from Morningstar, from uh, IES or others. Um, what we do, we just plug into those streams, use customer owned data, run the predictions in the cloud instantly and stream the results into the existing environments. So there's no need to buy new stuff, integrate a lot. It's just taking the data, going through Juice 8, running the predictions and streaming the predictions back to the client environments. Now I'm going to show you how we can use Juice 8, getting a little bit techy now with code. Okay, here you see the coding environment, which I'm demoing to you and which is available to everyone. So everyone can make access, can have access to that platform and test it himself. First of all, you need to connect to Juice 8. It's, a, it's a, an API in the cloud. It's running in Google and making use of Google's um, um, AI uh, uh, stuff, which is available for everyone. And we, uh, once we tested the connection, we can have a look what, what are the, the av available forecasts, which are in that community edition. And you see that the available forecasts are Bitcoin on one day and uh, for our closing prices. Yeah, so um, this is the asset which we can, uh, or which you can test. And if you want to get access to the latest forecast, it's another API call. I just run that, which is then taking now, right now, the latest price, end of day price I got, which was then the 3rd of uh, February. And um, the Bitcoin was at 33,000. The last, last picture we saw it, it was 10,000, so it gained a lot. And this is how the model predicts Bitcoin for the next 13 days. And it starts from 32, 33,000 up to 33,648. Um, saying it's going up, which is a bullish market movement. So if you trust this model now with this accuracy of 88%, you should better go long and not going short. 
we will see on the 4th of February if this model was correct. And then uh, I'm happy to connect with you later if you want to have access to that platform. That was Juice 8 Tech with their algorithmic trading solution. And that brings us to the end of pitches from outside of Japan. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we'd like for you to help us choose the Audience Choice Award. All you have to do is scan the image that you can see right now, which will take you to the page where you can make your choice. Please note that the live broadcast on the 24th will start one hour earlier than today at 1800 hours. We'll have speakers on new financial services. Speakers will include Mr. Takeshi Kito, the CEO of Cloud Reality Incorporated, Mr. Ryota Hayashi, CEO of Finitech Holdings Limited, Mr. Shinichiro Kai, CEO of Folio, and Mr. Hirokuni Onozawa, Executive Officer and Group Leader of the Planning Business Development of GMO Aozora NetBank Limited. There will also be a panel discussion with these four, as well as Mr. Takashi Okita, CEO of Nudge Incorporated, as a moderator. Well, thank you for watching today. Please subscribe to the PhenoLab channel, and now come with us to take a tour of PhenoLab. みなさんこんにちは三菱自所クロステックウェブの佐々木でございます本日はコミュニティスペースフィノラボの魅力を2分間でお伝えしていきたいと思います早速ですがこちらがメインエントランスとなっておりましてあちらにイベントスペースこちらに会議室と共用スペースが揃っております入り口正面にはメンバー企業のプレートが掲げられラウンジには指紋登録のある方のみ入室可能となっております入ってすぐに受付がございますこちらでは日々の受付業務に加えメンバーの皆様とのコミュニケーションを通じてメンバーリレーションのハブとしての役割を担っていますラウンジには応接スタンディングライブラリーテレフォンブースそしてこちらがメインラウンジのソファーエリアとなっておりますこのラウンジ内では企業の枠を超えて日々コミュニケーションが活発に行われておりキッチンエリアはそれの重要な役割を果たしております忙しい仕事の合間でも一息つきに来てくださるメンバーのためにフィノラボオリジナルのコーヒーを入れてお待ちしておりますフィノラボではさまざまなイベントが行われておりますメンバー企業自らイベントを主催することももちろん可能でございますお部屋のエリアに移っていきましょうお部屋のエリアには再度指紋が必要となりますこちらのエリアには大小さまざまなお部屋をご用意しており各個室にさらにセキュリティがかけられております日本ラフェックスのメンバーは本社とは全く違う雰囲気文化風土であるこのフィノラボでイノベーション活動に取り組んでいます異なる地の衝突というものを起こそうと考えてこのフィノラボに入居させていただきましたいろんなフィンテックのスタートアップの方々がいらっしゃいましてそういった方々とですね今後の休業に向けたディスカッションっていうのができるというのは非常にいい環境かなというふうに思っておりますコミュニティスタッフの方が弊社のメンバーも含めていろんな方同士をつなげていただけますのでそういったところも非常に助かっておりますスペースとしてのフィノラボはそのコミュニティ活動の中心地であるとともにその趣旨にご賛同いただき自らも金融イノベーションを起こそうとする企業が集まったインキュベーションセンターです次世代の本流を作るスタートアップを創世期から成長軌道に乗せていくことに特化したファンドを立ち上げメンバー企業支援としてさまざまなバックオフィス業務をシェアリングするサービスサブポジを始めました我々は共にイノベーションを起こしてくれるメンバーを常に求めておりますぜひフィノラボにお越しください